You know, so let me let me give you let me give you a leg up. You know, there are times when young people say they're called to preach. And, and they'll stand up and they'll announce their call. And there have even been times when the young men that I have known have stood up and preached and announced their call, and others have come to me and said, Oh man, I don't know. Did he miss it? And you know, that's not for being judged. But I want to tell you that these young men need the opportunity to preach and teach. They're not ever going to be any more than they are. And it, it needs, you need to be an encourager. I remember, I remember the second message that I ever preached, and I only preached in my home church one time, and I was, uh, it, was on a, it was in a, a revival meeting, and my mom's pastor called me up and said, would you come and finish out the revival? Our speaker is not going to be able to come. And so I said, yeah, sure. I was eager, I was eager to preach. And the guy who I was following was a doctor and had a, had a big degree. And so on a Friday night, he got me. And the night that I was there, the chorus from the Bell Creek, I'm sorry, not Bell Creek, uh, Cotton Hill Baptist Church, the men's chorus was there. I got up that night and I preached the best five minute sermon I'd ever preached. And I preached, and by the way, when I got up, I preached every all, all the Bible I knew in five minutes, amen. I started over here in Genesis and went all the way through the Revelation. I give them everything I had and some things I wasn't sure about, amen. But you know what happened at the end of that service? Those men in that choir went out. And you know what they said? They shook him, they shook him by the hand and said, Preacher, that was a great message. And, and he said, you need to keep on going, keep on preaching, keep on doing. And man, you know what? Years after that, I, every year, uh, for many years, I had that men's course as long as they existed. I'd have them uh, either in a revival or I'd have them at a, at a homecoming service or some kind of special meeting. I'd have them, oh, and man, they were blessing me because year after year I'd have them and it would be a great time and I'd say this every time I'd have them. I said this, these men have really been a blessing to me in my life and in my ministry and I'd tell about that night. I said if there's one thing about them, they lie. <laughs> but they weren't lying. You know what they were doing? They were encouraging the young preacher. Here I am 31 years later and I'm here because of all the life I've run into some encouragers that were willing to, to put up with what little bit I had and encourage me and say, preacher, you need to keep going. And listen, brethren, that's what you need to do. Hey, he had a minister of encouragement. Hey, many years later, if you read 2 Timothy, you'll find out that Paul is now, you remember in that, in that chapter in 2 Timothy, uh, he's talking, that's the same chapter where he wrote, uh, I'm, now there, I'm now ready to be offered the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith in his fourth days later. For me, a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day, and not to me only, but to all they that love his appearing. In that same chapter, he said this. He said, you get, you get one, and you bring it to me. Listen to this. Because he's profitable to me for the ministry. You see, he changed his mind. At one time, he didn't believe in it. But he was wrong. And were it not for an encourager by the name of Barnabas, who would have had the first gospel? I mean, who would have had Mark's gospel? The gospel? By the way, that was the gospel to the Gentile. A gospel of Acts. It was to the Romans. Hey, I don't know about you, but I want my ministry to be a minister of encouragement. And, and, and I believe that when people come to Big Body Missionary Baptist Church, that they ought not be beat up. I don't think you, I don't think, listen, I don't think y'all be with in Sunday school. 
I don't think the preacher ought to be the one. I think they ought to be, they, they ought to be able to edify. That's what the word edify means, by the way. Encourage. Lift it up. You see, Barnabas had it right. Beginning that he believed in someone unless no one else believed in. And sometimes that's what you have to do. I'm thankful for people like that in my life and in my ministry. Let me say this. Listen. One of the greatest tools in any leader's life is the tool of encouragement. Now, I want to speak to you parents just a little bit. You know, you need to be an encourager in the life of your children. And for you grandparents, you need to be an encourager in the life of your grandparents and children. I was greatly moved here not too long ago. I'm going to stop right here because I'm going to do this one ago. I was asked to do a funeral sermon of a man that I'd only met just a couple, just a couple of times. And I did it. But one of the things that happened was when I got to the funeral home, I was supposed to meet one of the sons and I ended up meeting the other. I, I wasn't really prepared for that. But I ended up meeting the other son. But he said something to me that stuck with me, and I, God's even used that. He said, he said, here's why I want my dad to be remembered. And he began to tell me things about him, his family. And he said, when I was a little boy, he said, they said I was retarded. That's what he was. Mentally handicapped. But he said, my dad always believed in me. He said, he always told me I could do it. And, and he always encouraged me. And he said, because of my dad, he said, I have done well. And all my siblings, all of my siblings have done well. And it was because my dad encouraged me. He said, today, I have a PhD. And I have a dean at West Virginia University. And it was all because of my dad. It was all because of the encouragement. When other Hey, listen. 
We used to. I think I said we quit. I hate to lie. Amen. We used to bust kids in from the trailer court. I was a pastor at the Big Bop Baptist Union. Now I'm a pastor at Big Bop. I was a pastor at Carbondale Baptist Church. It's hard for me to tell where I am sometimes. Amen. And uh, I was. I, in the past, I was a pastor for about 12 years. We had one little old 12 passenger bus. And we got all that we could out of it. I mean, we run, a, we run a bus route. First thing we did was we run up Camp Hall. We went to a we went to a place. Now we're gonna find out if we knew anything about Camp Hall. Uh, if Ella Little Harvey was here, she could she know what I'm talking about. We ran all the way to a place called Bullpush. When you went to Bullpush, if you went up the left-hand side, you went so far up the hall, you were in Kanoa County, we were in the edge of Kanoa County. We bust all the way to Bull Push, came down, dropped those big kids off. We bust all the way to Smithers, came down and dropped those kids off. And then we got on the bus and went all the way to Deepwater from Carbondale. Came back down and hit the mouth of Cotton Hall and went all the way to Kingman to a trailer court. We had 60 kids, first through six, on Wednesday night. Did we have problems? Oh, you were really in. I mean, I've seen kids do just about everything. I seen a kid, I seen a girl reach out the window one night in the bus and had those windows that pulled out the bottom, and she grabbed a kid by the hair and snatched him off the ground. All the way. He was hanging in there, kicking his feet. I mean, I've seen I refereed every kind of fight that you want to think about. I, 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 hey, who, who drove? I had another guy driving, and I refereed. I was, I call myself a bus captain. I was refereeing. Did you kick any kids off? Not one. I picked a kid up every night in the beer joint. His daddy and mommy were inside the beer joint. I picked him up out of the beer joint and delivered him to the beer joint. Was he trouble? Yes, he was trouble. One of the last nights he rode, he rode that bus, he jumped off the bus, wrapped his legs around my waist and his arms around my neck and kissed me on the cheek and I about nailed it right there in the road. Let me tell you.